Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna be talking about a really important question that I get all the time, and it is the source of a lot of confusion among thyroid patients. And that is, can you be both hyperthyroid and hypothyroid at the same time? Now I'll give you a quick answer to that, and that is no, you cannot be both hyperthyroid and hypothyroid at the same time. I'm gonna explain to you though, a lot of the sort of tricky scenarios that can occur, which make this seem really likely. And I'm gonna explain to you how different tissues can have different thyroid status, um, and it'll probably make a lot more sense as we get into it. Uh, so, well, I'll just save that for later. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs, I'm an internist, and I specialize in helping people with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. But today we're going to be talking about um, the thyroid, but specifically we're going to be talking about uh, the difference really between hypothyroid and hyperthyroid tissues. So as I said before, can you be both hypothyroid and hyperthyroid at the same time? The answer is no. And the reason is simple. Um, tissues can either, can either be activated by thyroid hormone or not. They cannot be both stimulated and not stimulated simultaneously. Really, and the way that this works is through the receptor system on the thyroid. Um, if you know this, you know that most thyroid hormones have a nuclear receptor where the thyroid hormone must enter into the cell and activate genetic transcription, which changes DNA and RNA. Um, so that's what is happening. And then enzymes are being produced and proteins, and then that has the effect, the desired effect at the end of it. So you cannot be simultaneously pressing the brake and the gas on a cell at the same time. So a single tissue cannot be both overstimulated and understimulated simultaneously. Now, having said that, there are a lot of people which suffer from one of two things. They either have alternating thyroid function, meaning they're going in and out of a state of hyperthyroidism to hypothyroidism. So they're just confused in terms of what symptoms they're experiencing. And then you have people who are experiencing different levels of thyroid stimulation in different tissues. So I would say you have to kind of figure out which kind of group you fall into here, but let me explain this. So the second one, uh, the second group of people are those people who have um, some tissues which are being overstimulated and some tissues which are being understimulated. And as I get to this uh, area, I think it'll make a lot more sense. But first, let's talk about those people who have alternating thyroid function. All this means is that thyroid function exists um, either high or low or in the, you know, in the right area, right? And so this thyroid function can fluctuate over time. Now, if you get up to a high level, you'll have hyperthyroidism. And if you get to a low level, you'll have hypothyroidism. If you stay directly in the middle, which is where you want to be, you will have euthyroidism, which is a normal and good thyroid function. Now, what's interesting here is that some thyroid conditions cause you to fluctuate between the two. So one time you might feel normal, then you might feel high, then you might feel normal, then you might feel low, then you might feel normal, then you might feel high, and so on and so on and so on. So this can be really confusing to somebody who if they only, you know, this by the way can happen for days or weeks at a time. So if you're somebody that, you know, on day one is normal and then day two, two days later you're hyperthyroid and then four days later you're hypothyroid, right? It can be very confusing to you as a patient. But I can assure you that you are alternating between these two conditions. One cell cannot be both hyper and hypothyroid at the same time. So what causes these conditions? The number one condition that causes alternating thyroid function is thyroiditis, okay? Thyroiditis is a fancy name for describing inflammation and damage to the thyroid gland. A lot of different things can cause thyroiditis or inflammation to the thyroid gland, the most common of which is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hashimoto's thyroiditis, of course, is one of the most, actually is the most common cause of low thyroid in the United States and in developed countries, by the way. Um, and it is an autoimmune disease of the thyroid gland. And anything any in itis, by the way, just a quick a little medical uh, dictionary or medical terminology here, anything any ending in itis just refers to inflammation of that area. So thyroid itis means inflammation in the thyroid gland. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is from immune dysfunction. It's an autoimmune disease, which means your body is attacking your own immune uh, or attacking your own thyroid gland. But you don't have to just have inflammation from autoimmune disease. You can have it from a viral infection, a bacterial infection. You can have it from just becoming pregnant, by the way. So a lot of things can cause inflammation in the thyroid gland, and that can cause this alternating between hypo and hyperthyroidism. Now, the good news is most of the time, this is not common, okay? Most of the time, it's not common that your thyroid is fluctuating between these two con uh, conditions. And in a lot of these conditions, even if it does fluctuate, it'll kind of go like this. So it'll be real big swings in the beginning, then, then you know, sort of normal, and then you'll just level out and the disease will cure itself and you'll end up normal thyroid function, okay? So some forms of thyroiditis result in this. Hashimoto's does not, okay? The most common one does not result in this, but some of the less common types, including like silent and subacute thyroiditis and so on, they have this sort of um, 
those, these swings, which then result in just uh, normal thyroid function at the, over the course of time, usually about a year or so. Hashimoto's will eventually kind of go like this in some cases and then just end up low, um, but there are different patterns that you can experience here. And then I also wanna point out that thyroid medication can also do this, right? If you're taking thyroid medication, you can, if you take too much, you'll, you'll, have, you'll be too high. If you take too little, you'll be too low. So you need to find that sort of sweet spot. Now, a lot of people bounce between too high and too low and somewhere in between. So they can actually feel the differences in hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism simply because their thyroid medication dose is off. So you have to figure out, do you think it's your medication? Is it related to, to an autoimmune disease or is it related to some sort of inflammatory condition of the thyroid gland? All of these conditions can lead to alternating thyroid function. Okay? That means your body is swinging from a state of hyperthyroidism, meaning too much, and hypothyroidism, meaning too little. That could be a potential explanation, but that isn't the only potential explanation. In fact, another one, and I would say this is probably more common, is the fact that different tissues in your body can have different thyroid hormone status. Okay, so what, let me explain this so that it's easy to understand. Not every single tissue in your body is equally sensitive to thyroid hormone, meaning if your body pumps out thyroid hormone, it will first reach certain tissues before reaching other tissues, and those tissues may have more resistance to the effect of the thyroid hormone, okay? So let me, let me give you a practical example. Your heart is very sensitive to small doses of thyroid hormone. It doesn't have to go through this, this uh, genetic transcription in this DNA sort of area. It can actually attach to certain receptors on the outside of your heart cells, which can cause your heart to beat, uh, which can increase the force of contraction, or the heart rate, by the way, very rapidly. So what happens is you can take a dose of thyroid medication, it will go straight into your bloodstream, straight to your heart, it will cause heart palpitations or a, or a rapid heart rate. You'll feel it very quickly in your heart, but it will take weeks for it to come and improve hair growth and for help you, to help you with weight loss and so on. So in this way, you can actually be hyper, you can actually have hyperthyroidism in one isolated tissue, in this case, your heart, and hypothyroidism in other tissues in your body. Okay, so that's one dramatic example. But these tissues I've listed here, I'll lift this up so you can see it, they all are a little more resistant to thyroid hormone and thyroid medication than other tissues in your body. And that means you might feel hyperthyroid in other tissues and have low thyroid function in these tissues. So these tissues take a little more stimulation, they take longer to sort of get on board with, with, what, with the rest of your cells in your body and so on. So if you are taking thyroid medication, the heart tends to be a little more sensitive to that one. And I'm gonna go over these other ones um, right now so it kind of makes a little more sense here. So another tissue that is somewhat resistant to thyroid medication and thyroid hormone is the brain. Um, actually, it's, it's a little more, the pituitary tends to be really sensitive, but other aspects of the brain tend to be a little more resistant. Now, that usually manifests as things like depression, um, anxiety, OCD, other um, um, emotional sort of, or not emotional, but other psychological sort of symptoms and conditions, bipolar disorder being one of those. The brain just seems to be a little more resistant. So other tissues in your body might be re responding well to your thyroid medication or your thyroid hormone, but the brain is just, you know, it's a little slow to lag behind, and, right? And that may manifest as things like depression and anxiety, bipolar disorder, and so on. Another one is the skin. So I've seen a lot of patients who have acne related to low thyroid function, but when they take thyroid medication, the skin doesn't respond as well, or it needs a higher dose, or it needs more time, okay? So acne being one of those things. And attached to, by the way, the skin would be the hair follicles. All right, now hair follicles, if you have thyroid, uh, any sort of thyroid disease, you know that low thyroid function leads to hair loss. Now, a lot of people with low thyroid function, Hashimoto's included, they experience hair loss. And you'll notice, by the way, if you have hair loss, that taking thyroid medication doesn't always solve your problem, right? You may be taking that thyroid medication, but still experiencing hair fall. That is because the skin and the hair follicles on the skin or in the skin, they're a little more resistant to that medication. So you can have, you can be experiencing different types. You can, it's usually low thyroid in this case, but it could be high thyroid as well. The hair is just lagging behind the other indicators in your body, including things like your heart, okay? Then another really big one is your metabolism. Remember, thyroid, uh, thyroid function controls the majority of your metabolism. If your thyroid function is low, then your metabolism will be low. But let me ask you this. You can gain weight from having low thyroid, but when was the last time you lost weight taking your thyroid medication? It probably didn't happen, right? Or at least you took your medication, you thought you were gonna lose weight, and you did it. And that's because the meta metabolism lags behind those other indicators of thyroid function in the body. So even, by the way, before hair and skin and your brain and your heart. So it's possible for you to feel better, you know, have all other symptoms of your low thyroid be, be completely controlled with thyroid medication, but still not be able to lose weight. And that's because the metabolism is lagging behind. So remember these tissues, this kind of, hopefully this is giving you more um, information here. So 
Figuring out what is happening in your body will require a little investigative work on your part. So are you feeling too much thyroid hormone in certain tissues or too little thyroid hormone in certain tissues? Do you think it's related to the fact that you have a disease which is resulting in alternating thyroid function, um, which could be perfectly normal? Or do you think it's more likely that some of the tissues in your body are being overstimulated and other tissues in the body are being understimulated? Now, in my experience, I would say this is more likely, um, but it's a little bit more difficult to figure out. So if you think... Uh, first of all, if you have any questions, let me know. Leave them in the comments below because this is kind of this can kind of be a little bit of a confusing topic to people, especially if it's the first time you've been introduced to it. Um, but if you think that you fit into one of these categories, I, also let me know. Leave your comment below. Um, I will do my best to get to any questions that you might have. Um, and lastly, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients understand what's going on in their body, help them feel better. I have supplements and so on, all sorts of things designed to help the um, thyroid patients. So make sure you download those and otherwise I will see you guys in the next one.